And Chris Kanabi has basically argued, I think effectively, that those omega-6s are driving multiple different diseases as well, including, in his case, uh, um, acute macular degeneration or AMD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, for good reason. So uh, omega-6s are an issue. Mm -hmm. and, and probably if we just had to put put it in one sentence, the best way to reduce omega-6 intake is probably just to reduce processed foods generally. In general, yes, absolutely. Because that's where they're hiding. And then finally, you asked about saturated fat. Yeah. Now, we have been told for time immemorial that saturated fat is the bad guy. I am here to say that saturated fat is not the bad guy. Saturated fat is cardiovascularly neutral. It's neither good nor bad, but it is necessary. You need saturated fat in order to be able to make a decent membrane, decent mm -hmm. cell membrane. So so there, there's actually an analogy here maybe with the omega-6s, which is you don't want too many omega-6s, but they are essential. Can we think a similar way with the saturated fats? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, saturated fat <clears throat> it has certain advantages. Number one, because it's saturated, you can heat it to any level you want, right? And it won't cause the isomerization at the double bond to turn cis fatty acids into trans fatty acids. And trans fats are the devil incarnate. The mm -hmm. Trans fats are the single most poisonous thing you can put in your body that we call food. I see. So trans fats are, are very, very bad. And is tell me if this is a fair statement. Anytime you heat an unsaturated fat to a high enough temperature, you're running the risk of creating some trans fat. Correct. That's exactly right. So we want unsaturated fats. We have demonstrated the benefit and value of unsaturated fats, like for instance, olive oil. Olive oil is oleic acid. Oleic acid is the endogenous ligand of a uh, transcription factor in the liver called PPAR alpha proxisome proliferation activated receptor alpha. It's one of the things that runs the liver. It's a fuel gauge on the liver cell. It's a good thing. And, you know, I'm for olive oil and I got a lot of it upstairs. Uh, but, but olive oil has a relatively low smoking point of 310 degrees Fahrenheit. So cooking with it could be a problem. So depending on how you cook, Cooking with olive oil, especially if you put it in a frying pan and you heated something up, you know, to fry something in olive oil could potentially be a problem because you could be making trans fats at home, right? And the more double bonds that any given fat has, the more risk you run of creating trans fats at home. Mm -hmm. so, so this is why this is like deep frying in, in omega-6 polyunsaturated fats is so problematic. And exactly, exactly. But of course, that's what every state fair has. <laughs> so, what what are you going to do? <clears throat> so, the, so saturated fat gets away from that. Saturated fat will not isomerize because there's nothing to isomerize, and the uh, smoking point of saturated fat is much higher. So you will not get into any trouble. Now, saturated fat got a bad rap because of all of this very bad epidemiology that was done back in the 1950s and 1960s. All right. A guy named Ansel Keys, who's sort of famous in the literature, he was a hero, even appeared on the cover of Time magazine. Okay. And now he is a villain and has been appropriately vilified. <clears throat> He was the one who basically correlated saturated fat consumption with mortality mm -hmm. uh, due to cardiovascular disease back in the 1950s. However, when you look at the data, he cherry picked it. He cherry picked it. Okay. He published a volume, a, a very long volume, about an 800 page volume called the Seven Countries Study. Jeez, okay. I don't know. It was that big? Yeah, it's pretty big. And on page 262 of that volume, and I know because I took it out and I made, you know, like a slide of it. <laughs> he basically said that the reason that um, uh, 
sucrose, sugar consumption, was associated with cardiovascular disease was because of the association of sucrose with saturated fat. In other words, donuts. Mm. And all the countries that he picked in his seven countries, even though there were 22, he picked the seven that made his case. The seven that um, uh, showed the highest incidence of mortality from cardiovascular disease were all donut eaters. And the countries that were not, were not donut eaters. So it was obscuring uh, the story you told us earlier about fructose. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Those people were not just eating high saturated fat. They were also eating high sugar. And what he did was he basically dropped it out. Mm -hmm. Is, it made it messy. I don't, I don't want to spend too much more time on Ansel Keys because everyone's talked <laughs> to death about him. Is yeah. it established fairly well that he intentionally cherry picked this data? Well, intent is complicated, as we have learned in the last two years. Um, I'm not sure. I never asked him. Mm. I don't know that anyone ever asked him if he intended. But there were 22 countries, and when he published it, there were only seven. Mm -hmm. We have the data on the other 15, and they don't fit. So I don't know. You tell me. Did he or didn't he? Got it. <sighs> okay. Um, one more question about saturated fat that I think is important. Um, can we, th we're talking about saturated fat, but are there multiple types of saturated fat that we should be distinguishing and thinking about analogous to the way that we talk about omega sixes versus omega threes? Well, in fact, that's right. So, you know, we've learned a calorie is not a calorie. And by the way, a, an amino acid is not an amino acid. And we've learned a carbohydrate's not a carbohydrate. We've even learned a fiber is not a fiber. Mm.